Welcome to the next segment of our Day in the Life series. In this series, we are covering the details of how to be a successful PDM administrator. Today, we dive deeper into workflows as we add a loop to our existing CAD approval process. Let's log into the vault and head down to the workflow section. And here we will double click on the workflow we would like to modify. Remember our user must have the can update workflows permission set. Also, make sure that you back up your system before making any changes. For this modification, we would like to add a non-revision change loop to our workflow. This loop is intended for minor changes that do not impact our form, fit, or function. Let's jump into building our workflow modification. We need to create a new state. To do this, we can click on the icon in the top left corner, or we can simply right click in the graphics area and select new state from the options. We need to name our new state. Let's give it a logical name for this stopping point. For now, we'll use under non-rev change. We address the permissions and revision control in just a few minutes. For now, let's take care of the layout as we build out the modifications visually. The next step is to create our transitions that will move our documents from the release state to the under non-revision change state. We can create our transition using the same method as we did our new state. We have the option of the icon on the top left or right click in the graphics area and select it from there. At this point, we need to select the source state. This is where the document will be sent from. Next, we need to select the destination state. This is where the document will end up. In the new transition properties, we will give our transition an identifiable name. In this case, non-revision change required. This name will be listed when we perform the change state action from the vault view. After the transition is created, we can move it into place for a better organized workflow. Once the file is sitting in the under non-rev change workflow state, users have the ability to make the minor changes as needed. Once they are finished making the changes, we will need an avenue back to the release state. To make this happen, we will create another transition called release. We will clean up the visuals, then we will save the file before we move forward. Okay, so now we'll move on and set up the details of each transition and state. For now, we're gonna begin with the non-revision change required transition. Let's begin by adding the groups that will need permission to move files from released to our new state. In this case, we are only permitting administrators and CAD approvers to make the move. This will allow our CAD approvers to move the files in question, then assign them to be changed by a user from the CAD editor group. From here, we will configure a notification that will be sent as our files are transitioned. We can set this up to notify users, groups, or give the ability to select names from a dynamic list. Let's go to the recipients and add our group. In this case, we need to notify a CAD editor once the files are sent from release to our new state. Our approvers would like to select a specific user from a list as required by the change order. And finally, we can click OK. Next, we will set up the actions on our release transition. The first action will be resetting the revision variable. This action will be a set variable type. Since we don't want the revision to increase upon release, we need to make sure the automation action handles the revision variable values correctly. In this action, we are going to tie into our revision variable, then select revision from the flyout of special values. This will keep the file set to the current revision. Then we click OK. In the next action, we will utilize the special ink revision action. This action is used to automatically set the revision number of files going through the transition. However, it's good to note that this action does not write the revision level to the data card. Let's jump over to the revision numbers tab. In the increment field, we want to set the value to zero. This will keep our revisions from prematurely jumping a level. Over on the notification tabs, we will configure our group notifications. At this point, let's add a new notification and set up our recipients. I'm going to select most of my groups. These will be set to dynamic, which will allow the user to select who gets notified as they perform the transition. Now it's time to configure our newly created workflow state. 
At this point, we're going to add the groups of users that need access to files sitting at this stopping point. We will select our groups, then assign permissions. Now we can click OK. Finally, before we close out, let's go ahead and save our changes. At this point, it would be wise to test our modifications within the Vault system. Depending on the level of change, we may need to include other users to make sure the change was successful.